Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa man tamassaka bi sunnatihi ila yawmid din thumma amma ba'd ya ibadullah assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ya marhaban bikum in today's episode bi ithnillahi ta'ala we want to look at a tremendous characteristic that each and every one of us we should be striving to implement and to establish bi ithnillahi ta'ala uh, it is one that, unfortunately, it is rare in our day and time, unfortunately. Uh, in any event, let us get to it. We want to look at Wafa. We want to look at Wafa'uhu, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We want to look at the loyalty, devotion, and integrity of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was one who we kept his word. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was one who he fulfilled his contractual agreements. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was one who fulfilled the clauses of agreements and the like. The ulama of the the deen they mention al wafa'u that the meaning of al wafa'u then it means itmamu al ahd then it means to fulfill a contract wa akmalu sharrat. And it means to fulfill its prerequisites or to fulfill its clauses, to carry out and to fulfill the clauses of a contractual agreement or of a contract and to yani, fulfill these things. Now, this within, within itself is something that I want us to reflect on because unfortunately, we have many that are always trying to get over, always trying to get over on a system, play the system and look for loopholes and things like that. Whereas we should be honoring our agreements. Now, we should be of a people who honor our agreements and we should be known to be as such as a people who honor their agreements. A people who do not break their agreements, but a people who honor their agreements, who honor their contracts. The ulama, they also mentioned that al-wafa, al-wafa, sidqul lisan. That al-wafa, this means to have a truthful tongue. That we have to be of those who are truthful. I know we spoke about this many times before and bin ilahi ta'ala, uh, we'll speak about it many times again. Because as Muslims, we have to be truthful. We have to be of people who tell the truth. So, al-wafa, sidqul lisan, it is truthfulness of the tongue. Wal-amal, ma'an. So, listen, this is to be truthful in speech and in action together. To be truthful in speech and in action. Naam? So that your words don't say one thing and then your limbs do something different. But that you are truthful in both speech and action. And the Prophet ﷺ, he was truthful in both speech and action. And this characteristic is a very important and intrinsic characteristic of the human beings. The ulama, they mentioned that al wafa Huwa muhtasun bil insan that this is something that is specific to the human beings. Famahma faqada al insanu al wafa'a and when a human being loses their integrity, they lose their characteristic of loyalty and devotion. When the individual loses their trustworthiness. When they lose their trustworthiness and their truthfulness in both speech and action. Because remember, al-wafa, this, all of this aforementioned enters into it. So when a human being loses this characteristic, فَقَدَ حَظَّهُ مِنَ الْإِنسَانِيَّةِ أَصْلًا Then he loses his portion of humanity. He loses his portion of humanity to begin with. Now. So al-wafa, this is something that is tremendous. And of course, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he was the most excellent example in this. The most excellent example of loyalty can be seen in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The most excellent example of devotion can be seen in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The most excellent example of integrity 
can be seen in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So in this we want to look at an example from the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that highlights this. And the example that in Bithnilahi Ta'ala I want to focus in on is the devotion and loyalty that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he had to his wife Khadija, our mother, Radiallahu Ta'ala Anha. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he was devoted to our mother Khadija, Radiallahu Ta'ala Anha. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he was devoted to her both in her life and after her death. So you know what? It's real easy for us to listen to things. And then we walk away from it as if it doesn't relate to me not being able to connect the dots into our particular lives. So what I want us to do with Ilahi Ta'ala is I want us to really look at this example here. Because this is an example of Al-Wafa. And I want us to look at this. For those who are married, I want you to look at this and what is going to be mentioned. I want you to ponder upon this as relates to your spouse. I want you to think about this. Are you loyal? To your spouse are you devoted to your spouse because undoubtedly we should be loyal and devoted to our spouses now this is a good thing this is not a corny thing it's not an old-fashioned thing this is a good thing is how human beings are supposed to be the mere fact that you have individuals out there when you that are married and are not loyal to their spouse yeah subhanallah you wonder why we have all these problems in society if the home is a mess society is going to be a mess if the home is a mess, society is going to be a mess. In any event, are you loyal to your spouse? Is your spouse loyal to you? The Prophet Sallallahu he was loyal and devoted to our mother Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. And I want you just to ponder on this just for a sidebar for a quick second. Let's step away for a second and say this one point. Is that loyalty, it does not mean, it does not include a lack of the implementing of polygyny. No. A person could be loyal and marry other people. And you're loyal to each of your wives. Now, this is okay. This is good. But in any event, we want to just say that to put that out the way. Because I don't want anyone to come and try to use that and say, Well, see, this means that. No. It doesn't equate into what you may want it to equate into, unfortunately, for you who are looking for the wrong things, or fortunately for us looking for the right things, right? Anyway, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was so devoted to our mother Khadija, radiallahu ta'ala anha, in the most praiseworthy and excellent of manners. فَمَنْ شِدَّةِ حُبِّهِ Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam li Khadija from the extreme love that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, from the, the intense love that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he had for our mother Khadija, Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, كَانَ يُحِبُّ مَا يُذَكِّرُهُ بِهَا He used to love those who used to remind him of her. As Shaykh Raslani mentions, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to, he used to love the ones who used to remind him of Khadija. Naam. And an example of this can be seen in that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to become very happy when Hala, when Hala bint Khuwailid uqtu Khadija, when Hala the daughter of Khuwailid and the sister of Khadija. When she used to visit the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to get very happy. Naam. He used to get extremely happy to the point where you can see it on his person. You can see it in his face. You can hear it in his words. He used to get very happy when Hala used to come by. So much so that when she will be knocking on the door and asking for permission to enter. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, due to the, his extreme happiness, he used to say, Allahumma hala. He will say, meaning, Ya Rabb, ij'al al-musta'zin fi dukhul hala. He will say, yani, this is what it means. That he will say, Oh my Lord, let it be hala. 
Let the one who's trying to ask him to get in, let it be hala. Oh Allah, let it be hala. Naam. Why? Because she used to remind him of Khadija radiyallahu ta'ala anha. And this is a very good thing, but it shows what the devotion and the love that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam had to Khadija even after her death. Naam. Because loyalty and devotion is not something that will end just when a person dies. Person dies, okay, it's over. That's it. No, you, but that love, that loyalty, that devotion, you will still have it. The integrity that a person they will display inside that relationship, it, it is that which transcends death. It goes beyond death when it's for real. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used to love Khadija radiyallahu ta'ala and her so much, and he used to talk about her so much that Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala and her. Another wife of the Prophet Sallallahu one of our mothers, Radiallahu Ta'ala Anha wa Ardaha, as it comes in a hadith that is Mutafakun Ali. Qalat our mother Aisha she said, Ma Girutu Ala Ahadin Min Nisa in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ma Girutu Ala Khadija. She said that I was never jealous over any of the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam like I was jealous for Khadija. Now, and then listen to this, she said. وَمَا رَأَيْتُهَا And she said, and I never saw her. I never saw her, but I was so jealous of her. Now, so this is another important point to show you that what? That it is okay for a woman to be jealous. If her husband practice polygyny and he takes more than one wife, it is okay for the wives to be jealous. But a jealousy that is within the bounds, a jealousy that is within the religion, a jealousy that is shari, a jealousy that is legislated, not a jealousy that goes overboard, not a jealousy that says, if you marry her, I'm going to divorce you and take all the children. You're never going to see us again. That's not the, that's not a praiseworthy jealousy. That's not a jealousy from the deen. Does that sound like the jealousy that our mother, Aisha, from the Allah Ta'ala, and her, that, that, that she had? No, no way. Okay. So this has to be known. Okay. The jealousy has to be a jealousy that is shara'i has to be a jealousy that is legislated. It has to be a jealousy that's within the in 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 the parameters of the religion. So our mother Aisha, she was jealous. So for women to be jealous, no problem. It's okay. You could be jealous. But you have to control yourself and measure the extent of your jealousy. And you have to filter your jealousy through the book in the Sunnah, through the Deen of Al Islam. In any event, our mother Aisha, she said she was jealous of our mother Khadija radiyallahu ta'ala anha, and she never saw her. Why? Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa as she goes on, she says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to mention her a lot. And even after her death, this is just a snippet from the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that highlights an outstanding characteristic that it, we, it would, we will serve ourselves good if we were to imitate him in it and implement it inside of our lives. Illa al-liqa. Until next time we meet. Astaghfirullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.